Welcome to the Sports Wire, a weekly talk show about Garden City High School area preps and Garden City Community College sports. My name is Brett Marshall. I'm the sports editor of the Garden City Telegram, and my main coverage responsibilities are the Buffaloes of Garden City High School and the 19 area high schools in our coverage area. Um, my name is Levi Bernfin, and I'm the sports reporter in charge of covering the Garden City Community College beat, uh, covering the football team, the volleyball team there. And this is Sportswire. Fall sports season is upon us uh, a little quicker than we imagined uh, and hoped, I would bet. But uh, Garden City High School has got a scrimmage going on tomorrow uh, for football team and volleyball, correct, is uh, going on. So, and the college starts their season on Saturday at Highland. Uh, so it's getting down to the wire here. Uh, what do we expect from the Garden City High School team in the scrimmage tomorrow? What are you looking to see? Well, Levi, I think what I'm looking for from the scrimmage is just to see how the how the teams perform, you know, when they're in a live scrimmage. You know, are they running the plays, you know, the way Coach Brian Hill wants them to do it? Are they get are they organized? You know, are are they minimizing mistakes? Those are little things that happened a year ago when they finished four and five. It was the first time that Coach Hills had a losing season in his in five years. And so I think he's got a a, a lot of kids back from last year. He's got 16 starters out of the 22 positions. And he's really excited about what he's got. I think they're bigger. I think they're faster. Uh, and they're more, way more experienced than probably any team he's had since the team that went to the state semifinals in 2013. So I think Coach Hill is really excited about what he's got this year, and uh, it'll be interesting to see um, how much progress they've made in the two and a half weeks that they've had for practice so far. And they were really young last year, which was their, their biggest issue, and they bring a lot back. Um, obviously, Jared Koster, running back, is going to be the, the main guy on offense probably, but the biggest question is might be the quarterback position. What do you what do you think to see from that? Well, we all got spoiled with Grayson Temple, you know, <laughs> two years ago. Uh, you, you know, he was. I I always call him the high school version of Johnny Mansell. Uh, you know, his numbers were that good. But uh, you know, Jesse Noon has learned a lot as a as a mostly starter last year. I think he out of the nine games he started six of them. Uh, he just got a little bit better as the season went along. Uh, he's stronger. I think he's quicker. Um, he looks more confident in, in the practices that I've been out to see. Um, and I think that's going to show. And he's got plenty of experience up front on the offensive line. They're big. They probably will average somewhere around 270 across the front line. Um, plenty of experience and again speed on the defensive side too. So all in all, I think it's a, a season where from the statewide perspective, I think Garden City is going to be flying under the radar, and I think by the sixth and seventh week, people are going to be wondering how Garden City got so good after a kind of a disappointing year last year. Although they did finish the season with a 32 to 14 win over rival Dodge City at Dodge. That's always nice. It is nice. You know, that's the first time in eight years that they had won at Dodge City in the Hatchet game. So I think that in itself gave them a lot of confidence going into the off season. So I think a lot of uh, exciting things to look for. So I think it's going to be an upbeat season for the Buffs. Do you think that defense brings enough back this season that they can they can step up from a, a, some poor performances in games last year? You know, I asked Coach Hill if I, if I could uh, figure out if we, if we could minimize the number of 25 – yard or longer touchdown runs from a year ago because there were 15 of those last year wow. nine of them that were 60 yards or more wow uh, I mean and that's a lot of big plays that just were killers to overcome and he said when they went back and looked at film sat down in the off season with the kids that were coming back and showed them where they were on average two players were out of position every time those pl big plays happened it wasn't like everybody was out of position but two were you know one or two were and that's all it takes so i think he feels like the experience factor is going to help minimize that uh, and that they're going to be in more in the right places this year and won't give up the big plays well levi uh Brand new season for the Bronc Buster football team. Uh, new coach, Jeff Sims, coming in. Uh, very successful where, where he's been in the past. So talk a little bit about the Bronc Busters and what the, they're looking at uh, for their season opener on Saturday, you know, at Highland. 
Well, you know, it, it's a lot of unknown at this point, true, truthfully. Uh, when Sims was in last in the Jayhawk, he was very successful. Uh, 2009, they won the, won the conference, went to the national title game, lost to Cam Newton in the title game. Uh, and that Fort Scott team was the last one to knock off Butler before last season when Hutch did it. So they were really, really good under Sims. Then Sims went away, went to Division I uh, for a for four years as both a coach and uh, in the kind of an administrative role. Uh, now he's back in the JUCO and it's kind of, I asked him the other day, what's it like being the head coach again, being the guy in charge for a team? And he said he forgot how much responsibility it is to take care of 60 some odd kids plus coaches plus, you know, uh, uh, families even. And so that's a lot of hopes on a program. And he, and he said that's, that's been an eye opener for him uh, going into Highland at one. Um, but truthfully, it, the team itself, it, there's a lot of questions on what they could be. Um, I know within the program, there's a lot of confidence, uh, a lot of hopes for this season, uh, and they have a lot of talent. Uh, but how that talent will come together, how they can play together with a lot of youth, uh, he said. Close to 40 freshmen could be on the travel roster, which is 53 players. That leaves only 13 to 15 sophomores that will be playing for a team against a very experienced Highland team. So it's just you, you don't know what you're going to see on Saturday. I'm not sure Sims is entirely sure what he could what he might see either. Well, and any time you have a new coach and bring in a new set of coaches, you know, your whole staff and everything and new players, it there is an adjustment period, but he at least was here and you know, had spring ball and then Absolutely. had kids in in the off-season summer uh, program getting them prepared and everything. So maybe the transition at the junior college level may not be as difficult, you know, in some cases as it might be in others. Well, and that's the thing about junior college football is is the, the turnover so quick. And Division One, you really need two to three years to four years to turn around a program. At a junior college level, since it's only freshmen and sophomores at every school, you can turn around a program really quickly. It just depends on if you can get the right Kansas kids in and bring in the right out-of-staters that can that can infuse some talent, uh, especially at the skill positions. Uh, does he have that? Yes. I mean, he's got talented kids. On the in in the summer, he had. Uh, ton of quarterbacks and uh, four division one former division one quarterbacks were on campus at one point uh, they're not all here now and we're, we don't know who's going to start for them at quarterback he's been pretty tight-lipped on that but whoever it is is going to be talented and he's going to have wide receivers to throw to Jeff Sims is a wide receiver coach uh, background that's where he that's uh, where he coached um, previously at division one level so he they're going to be talented it just depends on if they can gel together um and if the coaching staff is cohesive enough as well because they are, are new to each other as well uh so that that's that's the biggest question the biggest thing i'm looking for at highland is how do they get along together really and how do they take on maybe they have a, a turnover a, a really hurtful turnover in the third quarter and how do they respond well that's always the question mark for week one, so I guess we'll just wait and see how things go, and then we'll have something to report uh, next week. You've been watching The Sports Wire, brought to you by the Garden City Telegram. I'm Brett Marshall, the sports editor. And I'm Levi Burnfin, the sports reporter. Visit Garden City Telegram for more, and look for this show next week.